High school graduations are right around the corner, which means now is the time students are planning their futures or trying to at least. Usually May 1st this Wednesday is decision day, the deadline to commit to a college or university. And typically prospective students know how much financial aid they're getting so they can choose responsibly, know what they'll be able to afford. But three days out, many of them don't have those numbers in hand. Why? Problems with FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. The U.S. Department of Education revamped their FAFSA system for the class of 2024 to try to make it easier. But a botched rollout and glitches made getting answers much, much harder. Results were supposed to be set out by mid-March. That didn't happen. And the backlog and changes being made led to major delays in getting applicants correct information to schools. That is critical because this is the system used to figure out if a student qualifies for certain loans, grants, and scholarships. Several colleges and universities are now extending deadlines to try and adjust to the system's shortfalls. And the U.S. Department of Education has added workers just to deal with these issues. There's no question that the transition here has been rocky and it's been challenging, not just for us, but for students and for colleges. People are working seven days a week here, long nights to make sure that it's going to be possible for people to get their aid offers. So now some students and their families are having to take a leap of faith faced with the reality of moving deadlines and uncertainty as they make important decisions about their future. It's a real world problem that they're battling before they graduate to the real world. So what can they do? What should they do moving forward? Let's get to the heart of the matter with Caitlin Venta, Director of Affordability with MOCAN, the Missouri College and Career Attainment Network. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get right into it. We have three days left before decision day for many students. What should they be doing right now? Well, number one, if you have not filed your FAFSA, now is the time. So you and your parents will need to create those FSA IDs and file that FAFSA. Once your FAFSA is done, the data will go to the college and they will create a financial aid offer for you. Hopefully you have that financial aid offer in hand or at least in a preliminary offer. If you don't have a financial aid offer, talk to the college, see if they have a timeline for that. And you really want to consider all your financial options before you commit. So get that financial aid offer, look at your options, see how much your balances are going to be before you make that decision for decision day. And there's so much confusion here. Are you seeing a drop off in FAFSA submissions maybe because of that? Yes, we definitely see lower than usual FAFSA submission numbers. A big part of that is that we started late. Usually the FAFSA opens October 1st. It did not open until January. So we're running three months behind without any extra end on the back line. We still need students to get those FAFSAs done as soon as we can. So we are seeing lower numbers, but we know students, families, counselors, colleges are all working hard to get those FAFSAs done. And we know with a little bit of work, we can get our numbers back up to where we want to see them. Yeah, this is such a, a life altering decision. Uh, you know, what, what is the biggest complaint that you're hearing right now? What are the biggest issues? Yeah, some of the issues have just been being able to get logged in. So part of the process is you create an FSA ID, which is like your login. It has to be matched with Social Security, and there have been some challenges there. Um, we've also had students who have a parent who doesn't have a Social Security number, didn't have access to the form until mid-March. And then, like with any new computer upgrade system, there's going to be glitches. So with anything new, there's going to be good parts and hard parts. We're working through those hard parts so that students can still get the aid that they need to get to college. If students and families are having challenges, they can reach out to their high school counselor, they can reach out to their college financial aid office, or they can visit mofafsa.org to get their questions answered about the FAFSA. As we mentioned, some colleges and universities have pushed their deadlines. We know the state of Missouri extended its final deadline for Access Missouri grants to coming up on June 1st. So what does this mean? What do you urge students to do? Yeah. So again, check out all the different deadlines. So your college or university is going to have both a FAFSA deadline and a decision deadline. So check in and make sure you know what both of those are so you're not missing those. And then that June 1st Access Missouri deadline is really important. If you're a Missouri student planning to go to college in Missouri, make sure your FAFSA is filed by June 1st so that you potentially qualify for that Access Missouri funding. All you have to do to qualify is complete the FAFSA and meet the income requirements. There's no extra forms and it can be a renewable scholarship that you can earn. So check with your college, find out their deadline, and then make sure you have that FAFSA in by June 1st so that you can qualify for Access Missouri. Right, you work with scholarship providers in Missouri. What are you hearing from them directly? I know that colleges and universities, obviously they want more students to come in, so they're, they're gonna be working with these students, but what are you hearing? 
Yeah, so this has been a really challenging year for scholarship providers, but the scholarship providers in Missouri have been so flexible and have adapted to these changes. So in an ideal year, scholarship providers are getting FAFSA data, they're getting offer letters, they're getting this information in February and March and are able to package students with great scholarships. We've not been able to do that this year. So every provider has taken the time to think, how am I gonna handle this instead? Am I gonna handle, take data from last year? Am I gonna use estimates? Am I gonna have families enter information on their own? Am I gonna change timelines and deadlines? So know that the scholarship providers in Missouri are still fulfilling their mission to help students be able to afford college. They're just adjusting how they've done that this year with the FAFSA challenges, and they don't want these challenges to prevent students from enrolling. Students and families should know they're not alone in this. There's a lot of help available. Check with your high school counselor, reach out to scholarship providers, the College Financial Aid Office, reach out, there is help available. Yeah, it's good to ask questions. Caitlin Venter with MoCAN, thank you so much for walking us through this today. If you're filling out FAFSA info still, MoCAN is holding help sessions that you can attend this Tuesday and Wednesday from nine to two in the Financial Aid Office of Kansas City, Kansas Community College. And if you can't make it out, as Caitlin said, you can check out the resources available for you and your family online at MoFAFSA. Dot org.